Hello there. Welcome to Live with the Paper Pixie, episode 300. I'm Julie DiMatteo, the Paper Pixie, coming to you live from Alpharetta, Georgia. Today is Wednesday, September 27th, 2023. As you're rolling on in tonight, say hello and where you're watching from. That may be important at some point in tonight's stream. I'm really excited for what we've got ahead of us tonight. We're celebrating episode 300. I may or may not have a surprise special guest. And we're going to be creating two projects together and maybe a couple of bonus projects towards the end. We're going to be focusing on the Deckled Circles dies and the... I always forget the name of this bundle. Oh. The Garden Walk Designer Series paper. Love, love, love this suite as well. And then we're going to be creating this cute little treat bag. Believe it or not, this is created with the largest of the Deckled Circles dies. So don't worry if you don't have the Deckled Circles dies, although I think you're going to want to have them. But if you've got layering circles, you can adapt as well. Believe it or not, I do have project sheets linked in the description of tonight's episode. Usually I don't post that until tomorrow. But I did include the diameters of the circles that we're using. So all of that is linked in the comments. Let's see what we've got next. Brian, are you ready for your cameo? Brian is here watching for your questions tonight. If you do have a question for me, just put a queue in the before your question. That will make sure that your questions get into my queue when we do the live Q&A session. I will stay on until I answer all of your questions tonight. Let's see. Oh, we are doing prize patrol tonight. So Brian is going to go ahead and pop this link in the chat. This is only available to our live viewers. So I'm sorry to those of you that are watching on replay, but we are celebrating episode 300 of live streaming. So I have three prize patrols. They are, they're all the same, but it is a full um, annual catalog designer series paper share. So I will be choosing three winners at the end of tonight's live stream. The form, it'll take you to a Google form. You can just enter in your full name and your email address. We're only using your email address to contact you if you're a winner. So that's, uh, Brian's gonna have that link pinned. Are you able to pin it? Mm -hmm. Okay, um, so we'll talk about it in the chat a couple of times. Maybe you can drop that a few times in the yeah. chat. I probably just need to change your settings, um, but I see that it's working. I've already seen Jenna's entered and Carol and Lisa and Jill. Awesome, it's working on my end. I haven't done prize patrol in a really long time, but it's a great prize patrol tonight. So three lucky winners. And again, I will uh, select those at the end of the stream. If you can't stay on for the full stream, I can certainly email you if you're selected as a winner. What do we have next? All right. Couple more things before my, my surprise special guest comes on. When you shop with me, you earn Pixie Perks on orders of $25 or more. All you need to do to shop with me and make sure my current host code is added to your order is to use my magic shopping link, thepaperpixie.com slash shop. That will take you to the Stampin' Up! online store, shopping with me as your demonstrator and automatically apply the current host code to your order. Now. If your order is $150 or more, uh, you want to remove the host code because you're going to earn Stampin' Rewards on that order, but you'll still earn Pixie Perks with me. I absolutely love seeing all these names coming in. We're going to do Wheel of Names, so I'm getting super excited. All right. We have an incredible join special coming up starting on October 3rd, if you haven't already heard about it. It is Stampin' Up's 35th anniversary this year in 2023. So they're doing a really fun celebration for October. With the starter kit, you have two options. You can either um, purchase the starter kit at 35% off. That price will be $64.35 for $125 in product. Or you can choose the option to get 30% additional product in your starter kit. So for $99, you can get $168.75. You really can't go wrong either way. Either option also comes with free registration to On Stage at Home, which is a demonstrator's only event. It's a virtual event coming up in November, November 11th. But um, purchasing the starter kit from October 3rd through the 31st, you also get free registration to that. That's an additional $77 value. So October 3rd through the 31st is a great time to join the Stampin' Up! family. 
I also have a really fun option as well to support the channel. I wanna be very clear, nothing is changing on this channel. This is just some additional perks. If you choose to become a channel member, it's $4.99 per month if you wanna join. The easiest way to join is to just click the join button that's right next to the subscribe button that will help support our channel and what we offer for you every week here. Those that do become members get some additional perks. I am planning on doing members only live streams. So those will be just kind of fun stamp and chats with my YouTube members. That's an additional thing. I will still continue to go live every week. Uh, members only polls. You kind of get to choose some things ahead of my weekly live stream, so your voice, your choice. Uh, members only behind the scenes content. You might get some behind the scenes photos and posts. Your name featured in the credits, which I will begin to add to the end of my weekly live stream. So you get a little public shout out there and then a priority reply to your comments on the channel. So that's an option there. Just wanted to introduce that tonight in celebration of 300 episodes and my YouTube channel. I don't know how long I've been creating videos, but that's a fun option there. Now, what do I have next? Hold on. I'm looking at my, <laughs> um, you know what? Why don't you come on really quick? I'm going to, I'm going to introduce my surprise guest. He's going to be coming back at the end of tonight's live stream, but I'm going to come back to, let's see. I don't think I did the right. Um, let's do this. I would like to introduce you to my brother, Greg Ferlito is here. You guys, a total surprise. So I'm sitting on the couch yesterday and he calls me like, that's totally normal. And we're chatting it up. He goes, how you doing? Blah, 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 blah. And then I don't know, he started to ask me a couple too many questions. And then the ring camera went off. He flew to Atlanta from Cleveland totally surprised me yesterday to be here live for my live stream tonight. So Greg Ferlito, this is my brother. Hi, everybody. <laughs> oh, gosh. So this is super exciting. If you guys remember a hundred episodes ago, my dad was on the live stream um, to celebrate that. So I'm going to get emotional here. But Greg is here to support me for episode 300. And I could not do it without this guy and this guy right here, Brian, who's not on camera, but it's been a difficult year for us, but thank God for my brother so and for Brian as well. But um, we're lucky that we have gotten through this together. So Greg is actually going to be creating a card at the end of tonight's live stream. And um, I'm really excited for that. So it's an easy card. I took it easy on him. But you'll have a chance to vote in a poll at the end of the stream to kind of decide what we're going to do with the sentiment that he adds to his card. So stay on till the end. Gregor's will, Gregor's will be back um, to create his quick and easy project. And he has a bonus project to show you, too, at the end. So I think he might give that one away. We'll see how that goes. So For sure. <laughs> Happy awesome. to be here. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, gosh. I love it. All right. So many things going on. We're going to get to tonight's demonstration. How, do, how about we do that? I'm going to start with the 3D project. Let me give you a quick overview again of tonight's projects. I love these. This is a circle gatefold card. I'm actually using a Velcro dot here. Uh, but it's just a fun way to do a gatefold with these awesome deckled circles dies. And then this little treat box or treat bag, I'm calling it, has kind of a buckle closure. So this little flap here actually just tucks in behind the sentiment. And I've never had these before, but I've tried them and they're delicious. And Greg agrees. He tried one last night as well. But have you heard of the Little Debbie Snickerdoodles? or I should say snickerdoodle cream pies. That's what's inside this. But the box itself measures two and three quarter inches wide, three quarter inches deep, and then it's about, I don't remember, three inches tall or so. Let me do that math. I put that on the project sheet, two and a half inches tall. So that's what I fit in here, And but you can fit other things as well. I just thought this was kind of a cute idea, especially for fall. And I found this at, I think my local Kroger here, so. There is that. And I'm going to quick show you the products we're using tonight. Um, obviously, the deckled circles dies. Those are sort of the star of the show tonight. I love these. Um, the largest die is five and three quarters inch in diameter. So you can get a lot of circle sizes here. And I forget how many there are. 
14 circles. So deckled circle dies. We're going to use the Blooming Pearls as our embellishment. The Garden Walk Designer Series Paper, which is a 6x6 that I absolutely love. This is one of my favorite patterns, especially for the fall, but I resisted. And then a really pretty poinsettia pattern as well. So you can use this really all year round. Again, they're six by six. Calypso Coral, Garden Green, Mossy Meadow, Poppy Parade, Pretty Peacock, and Wild Wheat. We're gonna be using the Modern Garden stamp set. And then the So Sincere stamp set. Uh, I'm gonna use Hope Your Day is a Happy One. Greg is gonna use this set sentiment on his project. Be grateful for what you have. Be proud of who you are. And... I have a couple punches I pulled and I kind of just pulled from my stash, but the Petal Park Builder Punch, I really am just using that for the leaves. And the Banners Pick a Punch, we'll use that for the little buckle closure. And then the Modern Oval Punch. So lots of fun with products today. All right, we're gonna start with the 3D project tonight and then we'll do the gatefold. And I've got a template for you as well. So again, I have taken a six by six sheet and I cut die cut this using the largest of the deckled circles. So this is five and three quarter inches in diameter. I'm gonna bring in the Simply Scored and we're gonna go ahead and score this. Now I gotta look at my measurements here. All right, so because this is a circle, I do recommend that you, it's not the end of the world, but a non-directional paper is a little bit easier with this unless you can kind of get your directional setup um, t running top to bottom. The first two score lines are gonna end up being these score lines on the front of the treat bag. So if you do have a directional pattern, you just wanna kind of pay attention to that your first two score lines. So we're gonna go ahead and score at one and a half inches. Now, again, this is a circle, so you wanna make sure that you're holding your pattern paper in place when you do both of these score lines. And then four and a quarter. Okay, so one and a half, four and a quarter. Now here's the trick to get your next score lines to be perfectly perpendicular. Um, you go ahead and fold on one of those score lines to give yourself a flat edge. And then you can put that up where you've got this edge butting up to the left side. And then we're gonna go ahead and score at two and a half. Whoops, as I skip the track, two and a half. Oh, I pushed too hard. <laughs> two and a half and three and a quarter. Now, what I like to do is actually um, flip this over. How did I do that? Because I wanted to make sure, I, I didn't wanna push too hard on the cardstock, although I think that's actually good enough. You can see the score lines there. But if you needed to flip it around, you could just fold the other one and again do two and a half just to reinforce those score lines on that first folded edge and three and a quarter, like so. So you're gonna have just this, if, you're, if you imagine that this was like a five and three quarter inch square piece of paper, um, it's gonna look the same way with these um, perpendicular score lines, all right? So I'm gonna go ahead and fold and burnish on all the score lines. If I can find them. There we go. And then let me bring in the template. I had fun creating a circle template today. That was an, a first for me. So I'm flipping it over so I can actually see the score lines on the back, but everything's good. Um, I'm gonna have where I've got our, my wider section here sort of facing me. I'm gonna cut up the vertical score lines, but stop at that first horizontal score line, okay? We'll do that to both vertical score lines on both sides of the circle, okay? So I'm gonna turn it to the opposite side and I'm just cutting right down the middle of that score line. So you wanna make sure that you're not cutting through that center section, okay? So I'm gonna bring in the paper trimmer for this part. Kind of my preference, it's not totally necessary, but what I like to do is to create the tabs. So I'm gonna take my wide section and just fold it out of the way. 
to sort of release, we're gonna turn these into tabs. So this little folded edge here, I'm gonna line that up at the second, uh, the second vertical line to the left of the cutting groove. That's just the half inch mark on the paper trimmer, just to trim away the excess there. So we're left with those tabs, and I'll do the same thing on the opposite side, fold the big section out of the way, or the section that you don't wanna cut through. Like so. Okay, so that's what we end up with. Like that. Now, we're just gonna come in and miter cut. I'm gonna fold that big section out of the way again. I like to do it on this side, and we're just gonna miter cut. We only need to do the inside, because this is already kind of miter cut for us with the circle die. And same thing. If you guys haven't checked out episode 200, it's pretty cute. My dad came on with champagne and what was it, a popper? It was a popper that <laughs> shot like streamers. That was fun. That was also an unexpected surprise, you Ferlito boys. <laughs> <sighs> All right, so that is getting ready for us to put this together. Now, for the little buckle piece, I found that it's easiest to adhere this before we put the box together. So, again, this template is pictured on the project sheet. It was all organized and then I hide stuff from myself. All right, so I have a piece of Poppy Parade and this piece measures one inch by six and a half inches. You can just give yourself a banner fold if you don't have this punch. I'm gonna use the banners pick a punch. It's got these great grooves in here that are one inch, three quarters of an inch and half of an inch. So again, the little one inch strip will fit. It might've been a little bit wider than one inch giving me a little fuss there. But I do like to just flip it to the back and just center it in the punch there. Again, you can just manually cut that if you don't have this punch. And then I wanna break the fibers down a little bit. Bone folder, where did you go? <laughs> I know I put it back because I just use it. It's just hiding behind my ruler. So I'm just gonna go ahead and I basically put the cardstock between the bone folder and my thumb just kind of breaking down the fibers. Now, a little tip here, and you may notice this with your cardstock. Cardstock has fibers that are long, and depending on how the cardstock was cut, it's not always the same, or at least in my experience, the fibers don't always run you know, parallel to the 11 inch side or parallel to the eight and a half inch side. It's kind of one which way or the other. So I just find that you wanna make sure that your paper fibers are running uh, perpendicular to the length of this because you're gonna get a much smoother sort of bend in the paper. If it's a different way, you'll start to see this, uh, the paper kind of has not, you know, defined lines in it, but you'll just, you'll feel that it doesn't quite um, curl if you're going with the grain, I think is the way to say that. Anyways, so I just found you have, you may have to play around with your paper for that. So. I wanna just make sure, well, both of these look identical for the front. Just kinda of look at your paper to determine which side you want to be the front. We'll have, we'll have this side be the front. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm actually gonna adhere this one inch strip along the back, okay? And what I like to do, I'm, I designed the length of this. You could obviously do this shorter if you wanted to save a little bit of cardstock, but I, li I liked sort of the structure it gave to the back of the treat bag by having it glue all the way down to the score line. I just kind of eyeball where the top of that, the top edge of that paper is, or I just put kind of my thumbnail there, just so I know I don't want glue to go past that point. So I'm gonna grab my liquid glue and just put liquid glue there to the flat edge. So you're not putting adhesive on the punched end. And then we can just line that up to the score line and I'm centering it between the edges of the designer series paper. And liquid glue gives you a chance to slide things right into place. So then our little buckle closure is 
ready to go. I know it looks weird when it's like this. So next thing we're gonna do is go ahead and glue the tabs down. And essentially what I'm gonna do is put adhesive on each tab and line up that score line with this cut edge, okay? So we'll start. And then again, lining up that score line with the cut edge. Two hundred and thirty-seven entries. That's nuts. I did forget to put a little caveat in there. You do need to be a U.S. resident, so I can only send the paper within the U.S. That was a very important disclaimer that I forgot to add. Uh, as demonstrators, we can't send product outside of the U.S. Not my rule. Stampin' Ups and I just follow the rules. There we go. So just work your way around the tabs. You guys are awesome. Hey, if you're new here, let us know in the chat. I saw a couple of new faces. I know Nancy, you popped in um, in the chat early on. Um, my amazing community will welcome you here if you're new to the live stream. It's so relaxing for me putting boxes together. I love it. In case you hadn't noticed. <laughs> All right, last tab. Yeah, that's crazy. I see 572 watching. You all are amazing. Thank you. Thanks for being here tonight. And thanks to those watching on replay. All right, so we've done that, but how cute is that little pouch? I mean, you could easily put in like a little homemade cookie, a little handful of candies. These would be really cute as a table favor. So why don't we go ahead and do a little bit of stamping. I cheated ahead of time. I will tell you what I did when I cheated. <laughs> I don't like to fussy cut, uh, but we're gonna stamp and then I'll tell you what I did for this really cute flower. But I'm gonna go ahead and stamp the sentiment. Hope your day is a happy one. Here we go. And we're gonna do Pretty Peacock, which is a beautiful blue. It's a juicy ink pad. I just re-inked it today. Let's go ahead and put that here. And then I'm gonna need that. We're gonna stamp, I guess I just need one of the flowers. We're gonna go ahead and stamp the flower. I'm gonna do the stamping, but then I'll show you through the magic of TV, a perfectly fussy cut <laughs> flower, the Julie way. All right, there's that. What I love about this stamp set is how the flowers and the centers are, um, not, they don't totally line up. There's a little bit of a white space, which I love the look of. So I'm gonna pick the larger of the flower centers from the stamp set, pop that right in the center, like so. Isn't that so cute? I decided to go with the color scheme and make that center totally not true to nature. <laughs> a pretty peacock center. All right, so with the modern oval punch, these stamps out of here. I'm going to go ahead and punch the sentiment. The sentiment I'm putting off to the right side. So we've got some room for our flower. And then through the magic of TV, it's in my bag. <laughs> I actually cheated and I used my scan and cut. Uh, the brother scan and cut did that 0.4 of an inch. Uh, cut around. I, I stamped a whole bunch of these flowers. They're perfect for the scan and cut because they're a solid image, but pretend that I fussy cut that. And then I actually have two leaves and I punch these out. We'll actually punch them for the fun fold card. But I just did a one inch strip of garden green cardstock and punched uh, a couple of flowers from the Petal Park Builder Punch. But I know you guys in your crafty stash have either a punch or a set of dies that you can find a flower leaf from. The stamp set itself does have a leaf stamp, but that's a, kind of a tiny leaf. I think that's a leaf. Yeah, 
Um, but I decided to pull something from my stash, the Petal Park Builder Punch. All right, so bring in the silicone craft mat. I'm gonna go ahead and adhere the leaves. And I love to use this silicone craft sheet for um, making sure I don't get glue everywhere. But I'm gonna go ahead and put a little bit of glue on the edge of the leaf there, and we're gonna overlap the two. Like that, and then I'm gonna go ahead and glue that behind the flower. Oh my gosh, you guys. Thank you for joining as members. I'm not gonna catch all of you, but I will definitely welcome you for sure. Thank you. All right, so there's that. And then the last piece is to use the pearl. Where did I put the pearls? These are the Blooming Pearls, which is one of my favorite embellishments in the mini catalog. Um, they specifically coordinate with this suite of products, but I love the look of the gold in the center of this. Any of these colors would work as well. I'm using the larger of the pearls for the center of this flower, and then you'll see on the fun fold card um, that I'll use the smaller pearl. But isn't that, it just takes it up a notch. I love that pop of gold in the center. Now I'll show you a trick to get this buckle closure to work. It's really easy. All right, so I'm gonna kind of like flip going to use the um, one inch buckle closure here as a guide and I'm just going to grab four dimensionals starting a new sheet of dimensionals here and again I'm just again using it as a guide so centering that with the modern oval in landscape and then just centering that one inch strip so that I can picture where to put these and I'll bring it up closer to the camera but putting the dimensionals on either side, sort of as stoppers for the buckle. I'm calling it a buckle because that's what it reminds me of, but that's basically how I just laid it out so that the buckle will fit in between the dimensionals, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead and pop this onto the front of our little circle die treat bag. like so and then I'm gonna pop this guy up on dimensionals we get a pair of those and this treat holder just makes me happy it's just such a cheerful I love it and any of the patterns in the paper pack will work for this you get 48 sheets of the paper in the pack We'll just pop that right off to the upper left there. Let me get another snickerdoodle cream pie. They're really good if you haven't had them. <laughs> they have like a little bit of a cinnamon crunch in them, but really soft and delicious. Anyways, <laughs> I do not work for Little Debbie's. So that will fit just perfectly in there. Again, I typically size my projects for something specific, but you guys all find amazing ways to use them. I can only, like, I can think of so many fun things. A little, like, first aid kit in here or... Um, after dinner mints, maybe a tea bag or two with some tea cookies. Uh, and then this is just going to tuck right behind that, um, the sentiment piece. And it's just this cute little, now you're, um, the recipient may pick it up thinking it's a handle. That's also another idea for this if you wanted to turn it into a handle. Part of why I did the buckle closure here was so that you could easily get the little Debbie's treat in and out. But I just love, it's just a different closure. And it just naturally, because we curved that cardstock, sits in place. You see a little bit of it down here at the end. But isn't that so fun? Super cute. These would be so cute on the Thanksgiving table or just a dinner party table with treats. So that is our circle die treat bag. Why don't we go ahead and move on to tonight's fun fold, which is a circle gatefold card. All right, got some, quite a few pieces and parts here, but this is actually relatively 
easy to go together. I mean, it's really easy if I'm being honest. So for the, we're making Brian work tonight. <laughs> um, you guys are amazing. Thank you guys so much. Thanks for being here. All right, so I've got a piece of pretty peacock cardstock kind of sticking with the same color theme that measures five and a half by six and a half. And I've actually scored it at four and a quarter. Okay, so really, really easy. You can do this easily with a, um, a full sheet of cardstock. And actually, I'm going to take a moment to show you how to do that really quickly. This was how I did it. And, and basically, anytime I sit down to make a card, I don't just make one. I always make at least two. So I go ahead and score with the eight and a half inch side along the top. Score it at four and a quarter. Make sure you're using your scoring blade and not the cutter blade. And then I'm gonna come down and slide it to the two inch and I'm gonna remove two inches because then that leaves us with that six and a half inch piece, okay? So you can save that two inch by 11 inch strip for future projects. You know, it's great for punching out shapes. I'm gonna turn it to the 11 inch side and I'm gonna cut this at five and a half. And then you'll end up with two card bases that are cut and scored and ready to go for this circle gatefold, okay? All right, so with the card base, I'm just gonna go ahead and fold and burnish now. On the side that I scored is a valley score line. I'm gonna turn that into a mountain fold and burnish like so. For the inside, I've got a piece of basic white that measures five and a quarter by four. We're just gonna go ahead and adhere that on the inside. You letting the folks know that saying prize patrol to grab the form. There we go. All right, so that's on the inside. Then I've got a piece of the designer series paper, the garden walk, and this piece measures two inches by five and a quarter. And we're just gonna adhere that to this, this side of the gatefold. And then we're gonna work on the circle gatefold piece of it. Like so, all right? So I'm gonna bring in my die cut pieces. I've cut two circles from the using the deckled circles dies. The first one, whoop, as it's a runaway. This one is a five inch diameter circle. I'm gonna double check that, I'm checking myself here. Yeah, five inches in diameter. I cut that out of Pretty Peacock. And then I have this piece, which is the next size down, that's about four and five eighths inch in diameter um, that I cut out of the Garden Walk Designer Series paper. So we're gonna come back to this in a second. First, we need to score our Pretty Peacock or the cardstock circle, okay? So bringing in the Simply Scored, I'm going to then just put it right up here in the corner. Again, this is a circle, so make sure you just hold on to it and keep it in place as you score. And we're just gonna score this at three and a half. Easy enough. You can tweak that measurement if you want more of the circle to fold over or less of the circle, but I found that the three and a half was a really good size. Then I'll go ahead and fold and burnish. Now, the next thing I'm gonna do, there's a couple ways that you can do this with the designer series paper. What we could do is adhere the circle gatefold part, and then we could adhere the circle here, and then just flip the cardstock over, or the card over, and then trim the excess. Um, that was a little bit finicky, trying not to cut the, because uh, I was trying to get as close as I could to the edge, trying not to cut the cardstock, but I'm gonna show you a different way here. Um, I'm actually going to line it up so it's got kind of equidistant of the pretty peacock and then I'm going to flip it over but also making sure that I fold that uh, pretty peacock back and I'm just going to bring in a pen 
Don't worry about the pen, we're gonna cut the marks away. I'm just gonna make a marks at the top and the bottom. So there's one right there, and then one right here. We're gonna go ahead and just trim that on the paper trimmer. So I get a nice straight cut edge. And here's the trick, if you use pen, just go ahead and cut away the pen marks. <laughs> then you don't have to, you can use a pencil if you wanted to, but I just found it's easier to just cut just enough that the pen marks are left on the piece that we're removing. And then we've got that sharp edge there, or that, that clean edge. Now if it's raising up on you a little bit, you can just come in and burnish down with your bone folder, okay? So, the next thing we can do is go ahead and adhere this and then we'll put this on the card. So I'm gonna grab liquid glue. The other benefit to doing it this way where you trim it ahead of time is that you don't have to guess where to put your adhesive. So this is my preferred way of doing it. I've tried it the two different ways. We have definitely hit a record. We're at 612, that's nuts. You guys are awesome, thank you. I hope you're enjoying tonight's projects. I was really excited to show you them tonight. And I'm just lining up that straight edge right there along the score line. And this is a di diagonal pattern on this paper, so you can basically line this up any way you want. You could have the lines going horizontal, vertical, diagonal, any which way, okay? So now the next thing we're gonna do is flip this over to the back and I'm only gonna put adhesive up to the score line in the smaller section. And then I like to, I don't know, I kind of fold this backwards so it's more of a flat surface. And then I'm gonna turn my card sideways and we're gonna line up this edge right up to the score line without going over the score line, but also centering it right to left, okay? Just gonna pick it up and make sure that it's right up to the score line. See that? Like so. Isn't that so cool? I love the way that looks. All right, I'm gonna actually hold this together with a Velcro dot. And Kate Hambrick, if you're watching, I'm gonna use my scissors that you gifted me. These are the Teflon coated ones. I'm gonna go ahead and cut my Velcro dots in half, so a little goes a long way. You only need a little bit of Velcro for this card because it's not gonna get out of your way. But I love these, these are the Velcro Thin Clear Fasteners. They're the 5 8 of an inch in diameter circles, but they're great for cards and treat holders because they are so thin, such a thin profile. I like to pull the backing off of the clear side, or that would be the hook side. And then we're gonna put this on the back side of the circle. I put the rounded edge to the rounded edge, like so. And then I'll pull the backing off of the loop side, which is the more opaque side. And then we're just gonna go ahead and close this, okay? Doing okay? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Brian's frantically on the computer over there. You guys are keeping him busy. All right, so I do like to open this again and just press on the Velcro just to make sure those are good and adhered. But so that'll hold itself together like so, okay? And then we're gonna go ahead and decorate this. So let me go ahead and get my stamp. Which one are we doing? This one. All right, so scrap, basic white, pretty peacock ink, and the sentiment from the Modern Garden stamp set, it's your birthday. I feel like jumping into the 50 cent song. <laughs> oh man. There we go, it's your birthday, okay? Now it's stuck in your head, isn't it? <laughs> All right, and then we're gonna go ahead and punch this out. Now I'm gonna put the sentiment in the lower right of the modern oval here. So we got some space for those really pretty flowers. And then I'm gonna stamp them again just so you can see the two different shapes. I just put that ink back. 
So Pretty Peacock and Poppy Parade. Oh, I almost put that into the Pretty Peacock. Now my work surface is actually a neoprene desk pad. Think of like a mouse pad. So it's got a little bit of give, but it's great a great surface for our photopolymer stamps that have these solid images. Um, I love our stamp and pierce mat for this. So it kind of have the same the same thing. And like um, phone books, if you still have phone books, that can work. A stack of computer paper can work as well. And I don't need to close that yet. I'm going to go ahead and do the little circles. Just to show you, there's two different circle sizes depending on the flower that you're using. But I just love how modern and fun and funky that looks. So again, that's Poppy Parade and Pretty Peacock inks. But then through the magic of video, I've already fussy cut those with my scan and cut. Or I should say my scan and cut did the fussy cutting. <laughs> so we've got those two cut out, super fun and cute. I'm gonna show you how to punch the leaves. Again, this is a one inch strip of garden green cardstock. And I'm just gonna punch out three leaves. So I did the one inch strip so that I really only punched the leaves at the bottom, not without a, without a bunch of excess. I probably could have done it even thinner than that as those uh, paper confetti goes everywhere. All right, so then these guys, we're gonna pair two of the leaves together. Like so, I gotta look at my sample. Where'd I put my sample? Here it is, <laughs> gotta cheat. All right, so the big flower, I'm gonna go ahead and adhere the pair of leaves, like so. So cute and fun, I love that. That reminds me of those, like a donut or those Girl Scout cookies, you know, with the stripes. Should someone see their entry form? Would they see their entry? Mm -mm. Yeah. No. It should give you a confirmation once you've entered into the Google form. Samoas. Yeah, Samoas. I think that's what I was thinking of. And then this one, trying to look at positioning here, we'll do that. All right, so like that, okay? And we're gonna put the pearls in the center of those. So see the two different size pearls and how they work perfectly in the centers of those flowers. I love, this might have been a happy accident, but I love the way that that works out. Isn't that fun how that, I don't know, I just love the look of that. You still see the little bit of the pretty peacock, sort of those concentric, concentric circles with the, once you add the embellishment there, really cute. So we'll finish off this card. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and use liquid glue for the modern oval sentiment piece. And we'll pop that here. And then we're gonna have fun layering these flowers. Again, I'm just gonna use liquid glue for this, not to have a whole lot of Dimension to the card, because we do have that Velcro dot there. We'll do that. Let that slipped around. So do the bigger flower first, and then I'll pop the smaller flower over top of that. I love the way that looks. I'm gonna, let's see, I'll turn it like that. However it pleases your eye with where to put your flowers. I love bringing in the pretty peacock paired with the garden green. We got that poppy parade. 
So really fun. All right, so that is how easy this fun circle gatefold card is. We've got a Velcro closure. You could also do a little, a little ribbon slot there and tie a ribbon through it. You also don't need the Velcro, but you will. the flap will kind of pop open just a little bit. It'll break down after a little while when it's kind of been, especially in the envelope, it should stay closed fairly nicely, but I do like adding the little Velcro dot as an option. And then you can decorate the inside as you please. I typically don't decorate the insides of my cards, but... There, we've got our gatefold. So let me recap these two projects. Again, we've got our circle die treat bag with a buckle style closure, thanks to dimensionals for kind of keeping that in place, and our gatefold circle card. Super fun. So let's see what we've got up next. Oh, we're gonna jump into the Q&A right now. So you still have some more time to enter into Prize Patrol. I know Brian's been putting the link in the chat. We're gonna figure out how to get Brian to be able to pin comments. I think I just need to change your access level. I need to do it for myself as well. <laughs> so um, just a quick reminder, if you do have a question for me tonight, I'm gonna jump into the, the next Q&A scene, but you wanna make sure to put a Q in front of that question to make it into my Q. And then we're gonna try this. Um, let me tee up the questions really quickly. 617 watching, amazing, thank you. Uh, Q, I don't know if this is going to work, so give me a second, because I'm doing a, I changed the scene here. Oh, it worked, okay, Mary Jo, your son likes Stitch, what's your daughter's favorite Disney character? Ooh, do you know the answer to that question? <laughs> I was gonna say, it would be either Elsa or Anna, to be honest. Um, it's been a while since she's watched Disney, but that's a really good question. I'm gonna ask her that tomorrow, for sure. Oh, this is a tough one, Yvette. I, it's, I don't even know how to put it into words. I, to be honest, am just so incredibly, just humbled and grateful, because I know that I show up in your homes, whether it be on your, TV, I know some of you watch me on your TV, which I can't imagine being that big on the TV. Um, but you guys have just welcomed me into your homes and on your devices, and I have just absolutely loved sharing with you. I'm in a little bit of disbelief that we're at 300. I've been live streaming for um, seven years now. My very first live stream, I think, was in May of 2017, which, um, yeah, don't go back and watch that live stream. No, I'm kidding. I've come a really long way. Uh, it's just so fun to show up here and teach you all something new, share things that I love, and then the icing on the cake is when you guys share with me what you've created using tutorials I've shared that you've been inspired by. I can't even, it's incredible. So thanks, Yvette, that's a great question. Oh. <laughs> How long did it take to get ready for the episode? I've been working on it probably the last two days, but I was really working on it um, mostly full-time today, although my brother was interrupting me a lot. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> I love having him here. We're like two peas in a pod. Um, but I worked on it most of the day today, and you know, this is a little bit of a different show flow that I'm used to, only because we're celebrating. I've got some fun, exciting things for you tonight. So there was a little bit of lead up to get all the, the, the scenes in and make sure I had the right show flow. So yeah, a couple of days. But I will tell you, the projects came together faster than they normally do. I had told Brian, I think I mentioned it before, um, that I was definitely gonna come up with some 3D project using the deckled circles. So that's kind of the direction I went in and then just the ideas were flowing. I saw a circle gate fold on Pinterest. I was like, ooh, I'm gonna try that with the deckled circles. All right. <laughs> Does Brian ever get excited about anything? What do you get excited about? Oh, he's love, he, like he loves cooking. I know he gets excited about coming up with, he doesn't follow recipes, but you love to cook. He loves to garden. Um, the stuff that you like to research is stuff about food and um, leatherworking. You love leatherworking. He does get excited about stuff. I know you guys don't always get to see that. <laughs> I'm not sure I'm going to be able to do this ball. Let's see. Oh, well, I might be able to do it. Right. <clears throat> yeah, I'll try it. Right. Um, let's see. We're going to do a poll at the end so you guys can vote on what Greg does. 
my favorite part of making this my full-time job. Uh, you know what? It's it's the ability to use the things that I love, not only the creative time, but uh, I love the analytics behind it. As some of you, as my customers know, I have a lot of things behind the scenes. I love doing data analysis and automations. And so it really is the opportunity for me to bring together all the skills that I love um, about myself and um, implementing that in a creative way with, with my Stampin' Up! business. So it's fun, fun. It's fun being your own boss. <laughs> uh, let's see. Oh, do I have a favorite episode? Ruby, great question. Um, well, this one might end up being one of my favorites. <laughs> I've had fun with the surprise, the fun, ep the surprise episodes, but um, that's a tough one. That's like to ask me to pick my favorite child. I love all of the projects that I bring to you guys each week. I have to think about that one for sure. Oh, the kids were super excited to see Greg because um, they were home when, like, he literally called and I'm just, you know, telling about, oh, yeah, hey, you know, I got the social security check in the mail or it's coming in the mail. And and he's like, so how you doing? It was like, and I was like, wait a second. And then the ring went off and yeah, the kids were, they were like, oh. and he's basically a kid. <laughs> he's basically a kid. I wish you could have heard Greg and Nolan today putting together Lego projects. I was like, do I have three children in the house? Yes. No, it was fun. Let's see. Gretchen, quite great question. So become a member of the channel. There's a little join button right next to the subscribe button. You'll see that at the bottom of the video. And you'll see that I think uh, also on my channel page as well, but you should see a join. I think it's just to the left of the subscribe button. Let's see. The name of the sweet Mary Ellen. I'm gonna look it up because I never remember the name of it. The Garden Walk Suite. So it is on page 52 and 52 to 53 of the mini catalog. But I love this suite. It's my favorite in the mini catalog. Mostly because, I don't know, I just love the flowers in it, the color scheme, and the fact that it's more than just a holiday uh, suite. Let's see. So Cynthia, when we chatted on the phone, ch um, check to see if there's a video on the Stampin' Up! website on how to use the Stampin' Cut and Emboss machine. Um, I'll see if I can find it as well. Um, and the Prize Patrol, it's just a Google form. Brian's been dropping that in the link, uh, or in the chat. Um, it's just a form to ask for your name and email address, and then you'll get a confirmation that you submitted. Let's see. I decided to do the weekly lives in really in 2017. I made a decision that I was going to, I was going to rip the bandit off and just start live streaming once a week, every week. Um, there's been a few weeks I've obviously missed because of illness or traveling. Um, but yeah, I just stuck with it and it's the easiest and best way for me to reach as many people as possible. Um, to inspire you to create beautiful things to, to bless other people's lives. So live streaming has really been the best way that I have found to, to do that. So to make my an impact in my own little corner of the world showing up live every week for you guys. So the deckled circle dies, Tracy, are actually in the mini catalog. You will find those. They're kind of hidden. Let me see if I can find the page for you. Those are dies. Am I making that up? I know that they're in here. Oh yeah, page 63. So you'll find them on page 63, right up here. So it's on this page, okay? And you can always search for them in the online store at stampinup.com. Yes, so the join information, I think, Sue, you're asking about the starter kit special is my guess. Um, so uh, October 3rd through the 31st, you have two options with the starter kit. The first one is to get 35% off the $99 price. So that will be $64.35 plus tax uh, to get $125 in product of your choice. That's option one. Option two is to select the 35% more product so you will spend $99 plus taxes, 
but you'll get 106 you'll get to choose up to $168.75 in product. Now both of those starter kits ship for free, which is an additional 11% savings, and then you also get free registration for the on stage at home event, which is a demonstrators only virtual event that will be on November 11th. So that's a seven, an additional $77 value. You can just go to the paperpixie.com slash join if that's something you're interested in. Again, that starts on October 3rd, which is, is that next Tuesday, I believe. So. Ooh, these look great to give out for Halloween treats. How easy are they to create 40 to 50? The Halloween paper and dies would work great. 40 to 50, I think would be really easy. My best tips for doing multiples, Yvette, is to do everything in stages. So do all the die cutting, then do all the cutting, you know, to trim away, or sorry, then do all the scoring, then do all the cutting to get your tabs and then do all the adhering. And as long as you do it in stages, it should move along fairly quickly. The most time consuming part will probably just be the die cutting. But again, 40 to 50 die cuts, you're just having to die cut the, uh, the circles. Um, you can do that easily uh, in front of the TV with a great binge worthy TV show. That's what I would do. <laughs> so, or your laptop or iPad or something. So that makes it go by faster. But I found you really get efficiencies when you do each step um, all, you know, all of them one step at a time. Is that, did I say that right? Yeah, I think so. Great question, Nancy. I will keep that in mind. I was trying to keep it very simple and um, just kind of keep the same level of perks, but thanks for the suggestion. So all 300 episodes are not on YouTube, Helen, because I actually started streaming to Facebook only at first. And then there was a period of time that I just did or that I did Facebook and YouTube. And then I ultimately made the decision to move it completely over to YouTube. So it's a bit of a combination. My early episodes, I'm not sure up to what episode is on Facebook. Um, so they're not all on YouTube, but you can also catch them on uh, my Facebook page, which is facebook.com forward slash the paper pixie. That's a question for you. Yes, he helps me cut out things all the time and he's really good at it. So I ask him to do it quite often. He loves, well, he's the one that's really good with the cutting plates. I'm not, I'm kind of, I don't follow Brian's. <laughs> cutting plate methodology I should and he's probably like you've been using the t the machine haven't you um, but yeah when I have uh, multiples that I have to put together he does help me with the die cuts yes Brian knew that Greg was gonna be here <laughs> stinkers oh. I have trouble with a blank spot when I'm stamping with a solid stamp. How can I have them not bubble in the center? Um, great question, Darla. So one thing you wanna make sure you're doing is uh, making sure that there's not a bubble between the stamp and your acrylic block. Sometimes that can happen. Otherwise, I recommend using some type of a stamp positioning tool, whether that be the Stamparatus or the Misty or um, the old stamp -a majig that we used to love and see if that'll help you, you know, in, in the, the off chances that you get uh, that bubble that you can re-stamp again in the same exactly the same spot. The other thing I recommend is having a soft surface like the stamp and pierce mat underneath your paper when you stamp. Um, that should help kind of smooth out if there happens to be a bubble. Try those couple of things. Otherwise, it's possible you might have a stamp set that maybe the photopolymer wasn't poured or wasn't leveled. That could be something that's happening as well. So, Oh, have you ever uh, re-stamped an image sentiment only to remember that you were going to punch or die cut it out? Oh yeah, I do that stuff all the time where I wanted to die cut first or punch first or vice versa. Yeah, it happens to the best of us. <laughs> Do I have a tip for using new juicy ink pads with text stamps? They seem to put down too much ink on the paper and don't, don't look crisp. I tap the stamp on the ink pad four to six times. So Karen, if you've got a juicy ink pad, I want you to use something like um, the back of a plastic spoon or like a um, expired credit card or gift card. Um, I even use, if you have it, the, um, this is my tool of choice, but just because I have it, the 
palette knives just to sort of press the ink into the surface just before you go to stamp that sentiment set. And that's just pushing the ink down, the extra ink down into the ink pad. You kind of have to do it, you don't have to do it quickly, but you know, as you go to open the stamp pad, that's when I would kind of press the ink into the foam, then stamp, and then you should have a much better success until you start to use up some of that extra ink. You shouldn't have to do it every time, but hopefully that helps you out. Um, and the other thing too is make sure that you're not um, stamping on the ink pad really hard um, so that you don't get the ink kind of into the crevices of the, the text on the stamp itself. Um, the Scan and Cut is by Brother and uh, there's a couple of different options out there. I actually do have the one that I love linked on my favorites page. It's the Brother SDX125E, I think is the model number. Um, and it basically, it's, it does what it sounds like. It's called a scan and cut. You literally stamp, you add the paper to a scanning page. It, the Brother scans the information. It's almost like you're feeding a piece of paper through a scanner. And then it takes that information and you tell it that you want to cut basically the circumference of the stamped images. There are some stamp images that work better than others. You can't have any like broken lines in the image itself. That's when the scanner gets really confused. Um, but for solid images or outline images that have no breaks in the line, it works really, really well, especially if you're going to be doing a lot. Now, there is, it is an investment, so you just have to think through how often you're going to use it and if it's going to help you add efficiency uh, to your crafting time. I do not do tutorials on the Scan and Cut, but Glenda, I recommend the papered so P-A-P-E-R-E-D, Chef. Uh, she is amazing. Kim has great scan and cut tutorials, tons of videos. So the papered Chef. Let's see. So the link for joining Mary Jo, if you're talking about, well, there's two things I've talked about joining. Um, there's either the YouTube channel membership. Got you got her? Okay. Awesome. Thank you. And you got Ramona? how to get to be a pixie patron. No. So, okay, got her, awesome. Yes, absolutely, Sue, everything is handled with Google. It's, a, it's something that YouTube slash Google offers. You can cancel at any time. There's no, no um, commitment, no time commitment. Join or cancel at any time. Am I nervous crafting since Greg is there? I'm not nervous crafting since he's here at all. I, I, if you're sensing any nervousness, it's because we're doing a lot of things tonight that I don't normally do. And I was like, okay, how's this going to go? Um, but it's all in celebration and I wanted to bring some fun stuff to you guys tonight. But no, I can't wait till he shows you his bonus project because we, <laughs> we had some fun with that one today. Um, Okay, so Sandy, the weekly, the project sheets um, are always linked in the video description. They're not, they're not pushed out, um, so you'll always find them linked in the video description of the video that they pertain to. Well, that's a good point, Panda Scrapper. It is a belt and not a buckle. <laughs> it's the belt part, not mm -hmm. the buckle part. So yeah, hmm. I did not. It just was not part of my wildest dreams that I would be here and saying that I've done 300 episodes. I hope to do another 300 more and then some. So it does not feel like 300. I feel like it was just yesterday that I started live streaming. But it, then to wrap my head around the fact that it was 2017 is crazy. Let's see. Let's see. I'm not sure what is popping up for that, Sue, but it's probably just something on my YouTube channel. Oh, you know what? It's the link. Brian's, are you adding a, the link in the chat for the Pixie Patron? That's what that is. Um, and that's just to join the YouTube channel for some additional perks. Nothing is changing with my live streams at all. You absolutely do not have to join the channel. It's just an option to support the channel if you'd like to, and I've got some extra perks for that. I, that I picked the better side for the front and then I covered it up. Well, that's true, Nancy. <laughs> oh, yeah. Good point. Okay, so the treat bag is um, two and three quarter inches wide by, got my measurements here, two and a half inches tall, two and three quarter inches wide, and three quarter inches in depth.
I'm, I'm pretty sure a Reese's cup, if not one, possibly two. A two might be cutting it because uh, it's only three quarters of an inch in depth, but it would be easy to adjust that if you needed it to be thicker. But I absolutely think the, since it's two and three quarter inches wide, definitely a Reese's peanut butter cup because they keep making them smaller. It may fit the big cups too. Oh, Greg thinks it might fit the big cups. You have to try it. I oftentimes will make these boxes and take them with me to the grocery store <laughs> and try to fit things in them. Oh. Let's see. So Terry, for the Pixie Perks, the link is the pix thepaperpixie.com slash redeem. So anytime you get an email from me that you've earned uh, Pixie Perks with me, there will be a link there that says when you're ready to redeem and it's thepaperpixie.com slash redeem. You can also email me and I can give you that information as well. Just support at thepaperpixie.com. Could you fold under the circle on the gatefold card? Let's see. You could absolutely do that too. And actually, Karen, thank you for bringing that up. That is an option. What she's asking about is this piece that we folded and adhered to the back. You absolutely could put underneath the white piece. And technically what I would do is um, adhere that circle to the back. So instead of adhering it on the back side, you'd put the glue here and adhere it on the inside, and then you'd put the white layer down. So that is another option as well, just based on your preference. Great question. Do my Velcro dots ever come unglued? I'll make some and three months later, the glue isn't adhered and I have to use liquid glue on the dot. I haven't experienced that. Now I do try to press the glue dots down. Um, what you might be fine, possibly what could be happening is you've got a little bit too much tension on the Velcro glue dot. Um, but I would just, you know, try to burnish the, the Velcro down a little bit more than you have been possibly and see if that helps. I haven't had any of my Velcro dots come undone. Now, that could also be dependent on your uh, environment. What am I trying to say? Where you live. Like here in Atlanta, we've got lots of humidity and excuse me, the, um, a lot of times the tear and tape or the tape runners don't adhere as well because of the, the humidity. He might be a guest. So I was talking about him making the card tonight, but then Greg came, I'm like, okay, Greg, you're going to make a card. <laughs> so yeah, we'll do, we'll do. <laughs> Brian's like, thank you. <laughs> no. Um, Brian will definitely, will, I'll have him do a project. Don't, don't worry. I'll definitely. <laughs> Uh, let's see. So Vicki, you're not going to actually see your entry. There's going to be a wheel of nice. names. You took care of Vicki. Okay, awesome. So um, Marcy, definitely check out the Papered Chef. She's a Stampin' Up! demonstrator. So her videos, all of the products that she uses in her tutorial videos for the Scan and Cut, uh, use Stampin' Up! products. So that is a great resource, the Papered Chef. And go ahead and check her out. Because um, I've learned so much from her videos, for sure. She's kind of my go-to if I've got, you know, can that be done with the Scan and Cut? I go check out her channel first. So go check that out for sure. The All About Autumn paper. Let me check that. Let's see. All About Autumn is estimated to be back in stock the week of October 9th. So not too far away for that. Did the paper snips change? They were unavailable for a while. I lost mine, so I ordered three just in case. These came in a bag. Um, I don't believe that the paper snips have changed. They come in a little, it's like a vinyl triangular bag. So if that's how your paper snips came, that's normal. Um, but I don't think that they've been changed. Now I haven't bought paper snips in a really long time because I have a lot of them. Um, and I kind of stick to just two pairs that I use. Uh, but yeah, I've not heard that they've changed. So that's how they come in those vinyl bags. It's like gray on the back or a silvery color on the back and clear on the front. I think I answered this one. Jennifer asked my favorite part of being, it's just b having a chance to um, combine all of my favorite skills with analytics and creative. And I have that kind of brain that's very analytical, but also I love to, to create. 
Has anyone ever suggested to Stampin' Up if instead of or alongside of selling dies that they could sell a zip file for the scan and cut? I love the idea. Um, I'm not sure that they would step into that space, but um, it's a great idea. So if anybody loves that idea that Nancy has shared, uh, Stampin' Up has, for demonstrators, has a suggestion box. So feel free to add that suggestion to the suggestion box. The Oh Holy Night Designer Series paper will be is estimated to be back in stock. Well, I think it's in stock. Hold on. Let me look. Oh Holy Night. The Oh Holy Night Designer Series paper is currently in stock and it's on low inventory. So you'll want to grab that while you can, but great question. The size of the DSP on the front flap for this circle gatefold card, it is, the front flap was two inches by five and a quarter inches for the rectangular piece. And then the diameter of the circle die that I used for the designer series paper was four and five eighths in diameter. So two by five and a quarter, and then four and five eighths in diameter. Those are the two different pieces. The oldest between me and you, it's me. <laughs> I'm older and I'm wiser. No, <laughs> he's uh, three years younger. Let's see. Do you think it would be possible to add a card holder to the inside of the card? Absolutely, Lisa. So you could do a number of different things. Um, I actually just sent out a card with a gift card today and I just used a uh, removable glue dot to just stick it to the inside. That's one option. You could also use, if you've got the tailored tag punch, it's a retired punch, but you could punch that and just put adhesive around it and a gift card fits perfectly inside the tailored tag punch punch out. Also the smallest die in the countryside corners dies, um, that's a perfect width for a little pocket as well. And you could actually just put that right on that uh, four by five and a quarter piece of basic white and just make sure you adhere strategically with the adhesive so there's room for a gift card to slip in there. Yes, the kids are excited that school is back on home. They've been at school for a little while now. They started back on August 7th, I think was their first day. So they've been back almost two months, which is crazy, 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 but they're having a good time. Greg, are you a Browns fan? My entire life. Yep. A lifelong Browns fan, <laughs> full of disappointment. <laughs> oh. oh my gosh, Jenna, you watched my first live stream. Thanks for becoming a member. Almost two years ago, I was hooked. I can't have episode 300 without episode one. Oh, thank you. Thank you, thank you. Okay, so Kathy, there's two links that have been shared in the chat. One is for the um, Google form. And one is for the, um, the join. So you want to look for the one that has Google in it, the Google, right? Yeah, I'm sure. Definitely. Okay. Okay. Will you have a show and tell one day? No, yes. I've already had one. What was your show and tell? My wallet. Oh, we did do a, a brief show and tell. That was like on the fly though. We'll do, we'll do a show and tell. But yeah, he, he um, made his own wallet. And so we did share that as a show and tell one time, didn't we? Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, I've got my wheels spinning now. Brian is an introvert and I'm an, well, I'm an ambivert. I'm both. You are both. Depends on the environment. Introvert and stoic. Oh, you're introvert. Yeah, he's agreeing with both. Introvert and stoic. <laughs> Greg is laughing. Uh, can you please share your video equipment you're using? I'm new and looking for ideas for top down shooting. So Catherine, here is my best advice. My video equipment is seven years in the making. And I think if I started with this in 2017, I would have never been at episode 300. So mine's like over the top. For a top down video, believe it or not, I'm gonna recommend that you use your phone 
And um, Catherine, if you send me an email at support at thepaperpixie.com, I'll send you a link to a YouTube video to literally create an overhead filming setup with PVC pipe. It'll cost you just a couple bucks at Home Depot or Lowe's. And you can literally build an overhead um, uh, overhead camera setup with just your the phone your smartphone so that's where I would suggest that you start the cameras on the smartphones are absolutely incredible but don't spend the time investing in a lot of equipment before you get comfortable with doing videos and are consistent with it that's when you can start um, kind of upgrading but literally there's I've got a great video to share with you on a PVC pipe overhead mount great question Tammy when I come up with my ideas it's kind of a hybrid between you know, ideas that have popped in my head over time of, ooh, I wanted to use that product to create a project or, ooh, that's a really cute treat. I want to come up with a box for that. But oftentimes I'll get inspiration from Pinterest. That's one of my favorite places to go. Um, YouTube, watching other videos as well. And then just inspiration right out of the catalog. Um, I'll take pieces and parts of cards that I might apply to a treat holder, that type of thing, or I like the style of something. So inspiration mostly YouTube, Pinterest, and our amazing catalog. Let's see. I do not have a local group that I stamp with candy. Uh, t my business is completely online and it keeps me very, very busy, but I don't have a local group. I do love though when we have Stampin' Up! events um, to get together with other Stampin' Up! demonstrators, so I always look forward to those for sure, even if it's virtually. Let's see. So Deb, the $4.99 is a, one, is a monthly cost. So as long as you want to be a member, it's $4.99 a month. But you can cancel at any time. And it's all handled through Google. Let's see. You absolutely could use Square, Linda. Um, it's basically the same. It would be the same type of dimension. So I would start with a 5 and 3 quarter inch square. And absolutely, you could create a little box. Same style. It just wouldn't have the rounded edge at the top. But... Uh, Square works perfectly, or even just um, circle dies that don't have the deckled edge, that works as well. Do we take care of Barbara? Barbara's got a question. This is just if you wanted to join and support the channel, I have a monthly YouTube membership. Nothing changes here on the public live stream. It's completely optional, but it comes with some additional perks. You get your name in the credits at the end of the live stream. I'm going to do a monthly stamp and chat, which will be a much more laid back stream where I interact with you in the chat. And um, you, let's see, there will be some custom emojis coming that you'll be able to use and priority reply to comments, just a couple of little perks. You can see all those perks when you click the join button, there'll be a little pop up that just shares the perks of that. Let's see. So Katie, I, hi Katie, <laughs> hi Katie's husband. Um, I use Ecamm Live. It's a Mac only software, but that's how I kind of bring all these different scenes in. So similar to OBS, if um, OBS or vMix would be if you've got a PC, Ecamm Live, I would recommend if you've got um, a Mac, okay? And again, this is like level three. I have recommendations for different softwares kind of in between. My favorite is StreamYard. Great question, Pat. So I can answer the second question really easily. It's not included, but we do other fun things with my team. So um, totally different. We'll be doing um, twice monthly Stampin' Chats on the team, so you won't feel like you're missing out. And again, it's about five things included in the YouTube um, membership. There's a monthly live Stampin' Chat with me. Uh, you get your name featured in the credits. You get custom emojis, a little icon next to your name that you're a member. Uh, Polls, I'll give you polls ahead of live streams to help me pick, hey, which designer series paper should I use or which bundle should I use? You can have some fun to help me kind of pick and choose products. Um, you get priority reply to comments and I'm missing some behind the scenes photos and things, just some fun things for members to, to thank you for your um, patronage. So thank you, thank you. Zandy, great question. I will keep that in mind for sure at, and think about adding that in the future. Ooh, I have a stamp pad coming loose from the case. Can I glue it? You can absolutely try that, Gail. You're going to get really inky because I can't think of another way to glue it without getting ink on your hands. But it's worth a try. And if it doesn't work out, it may be time to replace your ink pad. Um, but if it's been, if, you know, if it's a fairly new ink pad, be sure to reach out to Stampin' Up! or your demonstrator and see if uh, there can't be something done there. But try it if it's an older ink pad and see if that doesn't work. I don't know what glue to use, though. 
on a water based ink. I'm looking to my brother because he's like, he knows all kinds of things. You could go. Super glue? Yeah, super glue. Maybe. Monst or gorilla a glue? Made a silicone? I don't know. Good question. Let's see. They're sitting on pins and needles to see your project. Uh, Jill, great question. I'm trying to think. I did um, a 3D project for the Andes stick. Um, it was an Easter uh, St. Patrick's Day project, so I did that in February or March. Um, but I'll definitely be doing the lint sticks. That's been on my list for a while. Oh, Nicole, you're so sweet. You can make it. That's what replays are for. <laughs> Thank you. Joy of Christmas designer series paper. The week of October 16th is when that's estimated to be back in stock. Yeah, Greg, way to go, Browns. Woof, woof. <laughs> From Kathy. Um, okay, great question, Samantha. I'm going to give you a big disclaimer here. Less than 1% of demonstrators uh, have Stampin' Up! as a business. So um, hours per week, oh, I'm not sure I want to answer that. No, I, I love what I do, so it doesn't feel like work. But great question. Oh, we got a shout out for your wallet. Let's see. Then you would have a bump on the portion that you would write on, right? Let's see. That question just came in. I'm trying to think. On the portion that you would write on. Oh, I see what you're saying. So, um, F. Joe, you're talking about if you adhered the back of the circle, deckled circles behind the basic white layer. Yes, you might have a little bit of a ridge back there. So it's total personal preference. You either have the ridge on the back of the card, like here, which you can't really note. I think it's kind of a cool look back here. Or you might see it a little bit behind the basic white if you adhered it behind the basic white. So great question. All right, we've reached the end of the questions. I want to make sure that we get to, um, let's see. We're going to do prize patrol next. Let's do prize patrol next. Why not? Okay, let's do that. Hold on. Let me get it teed up, and then Greg is going to come on in and do a really quick card for you guys. One of my favorite layouts. So give me a moment here. All right, I'm going to tee it up. <laughs> we have 310 entries. I'm going to go ahead and turn off the responses for now. Uh, I'm going to pop that up to full screen and go to the next scene. Okay, bear with me here because this is the first time I'm using Wheel of Names, but I had to put my little logo in the middle. Like you can't even read the names because there's so many of you on the stream. So I'm going to go ahead and click it the first time and I'm going to get my marker ready. How many you did? Three. I'm picking three winners. Okay, and oh, you can't hear it. It makes a little clicking noise. Oh. Dun, 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 dun. Judy Burgi or Burgi, I don't know how to pronounce that, but Judy, congratulations. Hang tight, because I'm going to give you instructions on how to claim. All right, so we got Judy Burgi. Congratulations. All right, winner number two. That makes me dizzy watching that pixie spin. <laughs> Anita Llewellyn, congratulations. Let me make sure I spell it right. L-L-Y-N, congratulations to Anita. And winner number three. It's like the longest 10 seconds. Carla Payne, congratulations. All right, Carla. Awesome. All right, hold on. You guys are awesome. Thank you so much. Go to the next screen here. Okay, so Judy, Anita, and Carla, after the live stream, 
make sure you visit the paperpixie.com slash prize patrol. Fill out the form there so I know where to send your prize patrol to, and I will get those out in the mail. So congratulations, Judy, Anita, Carla. Thank you, everybody, for, for, for participating. Now it is drum roll for Greg. Thank you. <laughs> Let's see What's the next scene here. Greg intro is what the scene is called. Oh boy. Are you thirsty? <laughs> I'm thirsty. <laughs> All right. So I'll enjoy a tasty beverage while you create a car. That sounds, sounds good to me. <laughs> oh goodness, you're awesome. In uh, homage to our dad mm -hmm. who brought champagne. I didn't bring party poppers. I didn't. Thank you. I think yeah. I was still picking up confetti from that uh, not too long ago because it went everywhere. <laughs> Oh. oh, I wasn't sure if a cork was about to come down on my head nope. there. No shooting. Oh. Nope. All right, sis. Thank you. Episode 300. <laughs> Crazy. Good. I'm going to sit while you create a card. I, I wish you, whoever is joining now will get to see some of the behind the scenes. I just sat here and watched this whole thing and like watched her prepping today. I love how much she plays it down like, well, you know, I just put this project together. It's fun. A lot of effort goes into this, but. Um, I love it. Pretty neat to watch. So if any of you are wondering, Julie got like 95% of the crafting gene in the family. <laughs> Uh, so I'm going to struggle through this project today, but. No, well, you're not. I think I'll do all right. Um, so cheers to cheers. 300. Thank you. <laughs> mm. All right. The stamping up champagne yeah. glasses. Look at that. Mm. All right, Greg, I'm putting you to work. All right. So the project I have for Greg tonight is a easy, super fun go-to layout that I love. It uses a very minimal amount of cardstock and is a great way to get a lot of cards with like a 12 by 12. So. All you need for the card is a card base and two pieces of designer series paper that measure three by four. So I think we looked at the the die cut app and it was 12, 12 or 18? 12, I think. You can get 12 card, well, 12 of the three by four pieces from a 12 by 12. I had to take it easy on Greg, but I also love go-to easy card layouts to make a lot of cards so that I think we all kind of get into the rut where we're like, it's too hard or I'm, I'm not inspired or I've lost my mojo. This is one of those total go-to card layouts. So, Gregor's. Where did I put it? Here we go. All right, so you're gonna start with a card base. Okay. And this is half of a sheet of cardstock. So it's five and a half by eight and a half. And I need to turn it so they can actually see what you're doing. Okay. <laughs> so we're gonna fold and burnish. But here's what we do. We take the valley Pardon my arm here. Take the valley score line, and you're gonna turn that into a mountain. So I'm going- It goes the other way. This way? Yep. Okay. Make Ooh. sure you're in the scene. Oh. That is actually made out of bone. The bone folder? The bone folder. Hmm. Okay. <laughs> Brian's laughing. All right, so that's your card base. Okay. Again, half sheet of cardstock. You could uh, score first and cut once and you got two card bases, okay? So the next thing is our little liner on the inside. That is mm. four by five and a quarter. And you need some liquid glue for that. This is gonna be the fun part to watch Greg. I've been waiting to use this. <laughs> use the pen end, yep. I've, I've watched this and I don't believe how well it bonds, so. I'm gonna do it under the camera. Am I going so just the it. outer edge? I just do the outer edge. Okay. Don't squeeze too hard. Don't put too much muscle into it because you want it to squeeze all over the place. Do, 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 do. Should, that's not enough. That's too much glue, that's but that's enough. right. That's not enough. Let's stop. Go heavier? That's good. No, please okay. don't go heavier. <laughs> uh, all right. So the game here is I can position it. Position it. You're going to get wiggle room, right? So you want to center it. Oh, that. Lord. Okay. You got a second. All right. You have a couple seconds. With that much glue, he has a few seconds. Okay. Uh oh. That's all Ooh. right. I got an adhesive remover for that. Okay. Everything is fixable in paper crafting. Well, I can go this way a little bit. I'm going to step out of the view so they can see you. Okay. All right. I feel good about that. 
So it'll adhere. And Somewhat. Then when that glue dries, we can use, I love using an adhesive eraser. Get, that's got to dry first and then it'll rub off. Okay. <laughs> so now we're going to close the cart. <laughs> close the card. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, and I need to do the pole, don't I? Yeah. Okay. Now we've got two pieces. Here, let me try the one handed. Yeah. Okay. Clutch. I got it. I got it. All, All right. right. So we've got two pieces of the same pattern of designer series paper, and these are cut to three by four. And I also recommend using a non-directional paper if you can. So our card is gonna go landscape. That's right, we're gonna do that. And the other one's gonna go in the center. So what's cr great about this layout is you could do pattern paper here, and you could do a big, bold sentiment and have this be basic white. Um, really quick and easy card for sure. So. Um, we're going to use liquid glue. Let's be a little bit lighter handed. Hmm. What's that mean? <laughs> <laughs> and I'm going to grab the keyboard and do a couple of things okay. while you're doing that. Because I want to start a pole. All right. Let's see here. Okay. Is the mouse going to work there? Oh. How are you doing? Well, I'm not. Ooh. There we go. <laughs> Oh, oh, okay. I used a little less that time. That's good. Slightly less. Brian, more like or less? No, I would need more. Some in the middle. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'm going on the, this way. Oh man, I'm gonna have glue. I'm gonna have glue yeah. everywhere. Watch the ads. <laughs> okay. All right. Oh. Start a poll. Everyone thought I was kidding when I said you make this look easy. Wow. Hmm. All right. You all may also notice I had to wear my apple today. Ooh, I spelled it wrong. Did you? I did. What was the what was the poll again? I said modern label punch with the deckled circle size. All right, centered, just like that. Sixty-two percent. Okay, the people are speaking. What what the am I doing? Label punch. Ooh. Okay. Um, All right. So for the sentiment, you're going to be using the So Sincere stamp set, and the Be Grateful for What You Have, Be Proud of Who You Are. Mm. So fresh fresh stamp set here. Now this is the red rubber, not the clear. So you want to pull the backing off of that stamp set. Put it in the trash right next to you. <laughs> a little trash can right next to you, Greg. Okay, you're gonna stick that to the acrylic block. Now remember what I said. We're not gonna give the ink pad what? Um, CPR. Don't give the ink. No CPR. No CPR on the ink pad. Let me get you a scrap piece of paper. Rub it on your pants. I was gonna say, do I you need You don't have to... to rub the red rubber on oh, your pants. Oh, okay, all right. <laughs> all right, so since it's red rubber and you've got it kind of centered, go ahead and tap, tap, tap. Don't give it CPR. Tap, tap, tap. Mm -hmm. Take a look at it. Make sure you've got good ink coverage that you think. Well, it's... Okay, so <laughs> do you see? Greg, Greg did a little bit of CPR. Whoa. So here's the trick. We're going to try this, um, but you're going to go ahead and don't press too hard because otherwise you're going to get that halo. So gentle, but yeah, a little bit of pressure. I'll lift up. See? So now if he were to press hard on this, he, was, he would get that little halo effect. So I would typically recommend go ahead and clean that stamp set before you stamp and try again. But as long as you don't do a ton of pressure, so now you're gonna go ahead and punch with the modern oval punch. So you wanna unlock it. All right, 
unlock. And I always stamp with it upside down like that so I can see. And you're just gonna to wanna to center that. And you can close a little bit, it kind of locks it into place and then push the rest of the way once you get it to where you want it. Well, okay. I think you got some of mom's creative gene for sure. See about that. All right, so that goes off. Would you like this back? Yeah, I'll take that back. Okay. Now, I think I'm gonna have you put glue on that and stick that off to the right. Okay. Hmm. I'm gonna bring in one of my flowers for you too. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> I wanted as much as I could have there. Okay. So this is, you just eyeball it. This is where the creativity part comes in. You put that sentiment where it looks the most pleasing to your eye. That doesn't mean it's gonna be the most pleasing to everybody's. Cause I'm we all have- down. No, it's not upside down. <laughs> awesome. Now we're going to add just a little bit of bling to this. So we've got a strip of garden green. Mm. You're going to feed that through the punch and get two leaves. Oh. <laughs> now, did it fall in there? There you go. Yeah. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Are they having fun? <laughs> Ooh. Okay. I'm gonna get this out of your way just so we don't. All right, so that's done. And then you want to try gluing the two leaves together? Ooh, okay. Just one little dot of adhesive at the bottom of the leaf. So like? Yeah, you can do it that way. We're gonna stick it behind the flower. So whatever looks good to you. Hmm. I don't know if I like that. <laughs> I love this so much. <laughs> All right, let's try. Maybe. Oh, no. Oh, Nelly. You're good. All right. That's good. And then I'm going to go like that. Yeah. Oh. Stay. And then you're just going to put a little bit of glue on top of those two, and then you'll put the flower over top. So, like here? Yeah. It's doing pretty good. Hmm. Like this? Yeah. You can put a blue and pearl in the center there. <clears throat> I'd pick a small one. Any color will do. Hmm, what goes with... I don't know. Pink? Because of... Go for it. So what? Whatever you want, You just kind of pick it up. Like, I kind of get the tool underneath it. Or, if you want, you can use the putty end. Oh, jeez. Be careful, it's sticky. How do you... How do you do this? You just kind of push on it and slide it off the acetate. Yeah. Yeah. There you go. It's a real piece of cake. <laughs> and then you just place it. In here? Yep. The adhesive is stronger than the putty. Or is it? Usually. There we go. There you go. I like <laughs> the pink. Great choice, Greg. All right, so now we're going to take, I don't know, two dimensionals. Pop those off. Oh. You want to leave the backing on the front. We'll have to peel that off after you stick it down. Oh. Keep forgetting about the camera. Here? <laughs> yeah. It takes practice to be on camera. Here? Yep. And another. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Now you can just use your fingernails and pull off the backings and put them in the little trash can. Oh, yeah, inside. all those fingernails that I have. <laughs> and then wait for it. Greg has a special project just to show you a finished card that he's going to give away to a lucky member of the audience. So you can put that wherever you want to. Hmm. Put it on the inside. No. <laughs> Heckler over here. Um, so you just want to make sure, yeah, if you put it, you don't want it to hang off the edge of the card because then it won't fit in the envelope. Hmm. Don't want to cover the sentiment. I love it. 
Greg, how does it feel? You've now made your second card ever. That's uh, <laughs> a lot. It's a lot. I like oh, it, though. Oh, that's awesome. Hmm. We'll clean up that adhesive. Don't worry about it. It comes off with the adhesive eraser. I love it. All right. Is, I it, think is that going to be for him? Uh, well, I, yes. What's interesting is, is I actually have, we have a sign in our house that has a similar sentiment. Oh, really? Uh, it's be true to who you are and the name you bear. Oh, yeah. So. That's awesome. Yeah. All right, Greg. That's fitting for tonight. It is. Are you ready to share <laughs> your card? I am. Um, Does it need to come? I'm going to clean up the mess so you can. All right. So. I know she has shared uh, where I'm from, but I lived in Columbus for 15 years, Columbus, somewhere Georgia? there. Oh, Columbus, Ohio. Okay, Ohio. Um, so I found it fitting today. I saw a die that just called, called to me. So I made an O H I O what? card. All right, let's do. We're gonna do this. You come down to here. Show it here. So you had a little bit of help. A little bit, a little bit. You had all the design. Yeah. He got to make all the design decisions. So I mean, very simple, but I, the Buckeye is like all all this. So one. the Buckeye I created, I just had fun with the Monkey Builder Punch and the Ladybug Builder Punch. I don't know, I had fun with it. And this comes from the Daisy dies. This is the Countryside Corners dies. Yep. And then this was a, I don't even know if it's still in the online exclusives, but it was a... a classic letters or something? Classic letters, yeah. Something like that. Yeah, look at you. Good memory. Oh. So classic letters is what you used. So Greg wants to give this card away, but we're going to find somebody in the chat who said they're watching from Ohio. I think it's Al Guzman. <laughs> <laughs> She's like, pick me. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so I'm going to go... What is the next scene here? Uh oh, my mouse. And then we are just about wrapped up here. If I can get my mouse here. Okay, here we go. Let's come to this. All right, so I'm going to just, just, Greg's going to pick. All right, I just typed in the word Ohio, and you can scroll. Oh, let's see. What? I don't know your. This. Oh, okay. Oh, man. We got. Northeast Ohio, we've got, there's a lot of good ones here. I am going to, Wapakoneta, all right, all right. Uh, Kent, all right, my wife graduated from Kent. All right, I think. Born and raised. <sighs> Gigi Andrews, I... It's got to happen. Okay, so this is my amazing <laughs> customer, Gloria. So, okay. Oh, that's totally... Gloria, it's you. I don't know why that... Hold on. Let me see if I can figure out. This looks huge, but... <laughs> um, Gigi Andrews, congratulations. I have your address, so I will pop that card in the mail. I'll have Greg sign it for you as well. So thank you guys so much, Greg. Thanks for joining me tonight. Um, next time you're in town... I think you can come back on again. Okay, cool. <laughs> thank you all. <laughs> oh gosh, you guys, thank you so much. I know this is a longer live stream, but wanted to celebrate bringing 300 episodes to you. You guys brighten my life so, so much. Thank you for joining me every week. Thank you to everybody that chose to join the, the channel today as well. I'm grateful for each and every one of you. Uh, let's see, we're going to be live again next week, 8 p.m. Eastern time. I think that's going to be October 4th. 2023, 8 p.m. Eastern time. Again, we're, uh, we're live every Wednesday. I just can't thank you enough. Thank you for 300 episodes. I'm looking forward to the next 300 and all the fun projects that we create together. Have a wonderful and blessed week. And don't forget, all you need are stamps, ink, and a little paper pixie. Take good care, and we'll see you next Wednesday. Bye.